Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Amanda Smith. My partner, Rosemary LeBlanc, and I own and develop Seamless Workroom. This presentation is going to show you how this workroom efficiency system can seamlessly take you from beginning to end for beautifully finished rooms. In this presentation, we will show you how easy it is to fabricate beautifully finished rooms with the seamless workroom system. This particular job called for the fabrication of stationary panels, a duvet, a bed skirt, and several pillows. The measuring and worksheets were first filled out on an iPad, saved, and then printed out for quick reference. I started with the single windows. I actually had two in this bedroom, each flanking uh, on either side of the bed. And these are for stationary panels. So I did not need every single piece of information. I took my iPad with me. This is actually my iPad you see in the picture and uh, opened it up um, and easily could fill out all of these measurements. Now I always make sure before I leave the house that I have my iPad, the forms and the documents downloaded that I need them. I in particular use Adobe um, just because that's what I'm used to. There are many other ways that you can um, use the PDF fillable forms on your iPad and those are all listed on our website uh, under the uh, frequently asked questions um, tab. So I went in, I measured these um, and they were very basic measurements. And once I was done, um, I saved them, save as, to the document cloud. And once I saved them to the document cloud, I went in and put the homeowner's name uh, in the title instead of SW single window fillable one, uh, so that I could easily come back to it later and find that particular client. I next moved to the bed and she needed a duvet cover. I actually use a very long um, dressmaker's tape measure um, that's pliable and soft. I'm sure everyone has those. And I stretched it across as to, so we could figure finish length and finish width uh, for the whole bed cover. She then, the designer then actually ordered an insert to match those measurements exactly um, because you know, sometimes those inserts are not the same uh, as they are listed on the package. So you've always got to make sure and, and determine that. Uh, she wanted a zipper at the bottom, so I noted that. And she wanted a welt cord. So in that particular block, I put yes. And again, this was done on my iPad. And I then saved it with this client's name uh, to, the, to the document cloud. This bed skirt was a little bit different than what I have um, had to do before. It is gonna be made or was made in three separate pieces. Um, this bed had a, a footboard. It also had rails on the side. And because of the way the bed was constructed, we had to, and she wanted the rails covered. So we had to cover the rail, wrap it over the top of the rail and then Velcro it to the, back, to the back at the top of the rail. So I had some very different measurements. So I went ahead and took measurements um, like I normally would. And then if you can see on the bottom right hand side, I have some notes there. Um, the bottom 11 inches finished length, um, sides 19 and a half inches finished length, um, and then the side roll over two and three quarter inches. So those were notes that I actually added in. Um, on the iPad, I, as I did this on the iPad, also you can click on and have a note box added um, so that you can add those things that are different because there are different circumstances on, in, in every single job that we see. These are examples of the worksheets uh, printed out. Um, this is the duvet cover and the bed skirt. Now I did um, use the iPad to record all this information. Um, and then when I get back to the workroom, I can um, download it from the document cloud and uh, save it on my computer. And then I can in turn either email them to people who might need them, such as if there was a, if the designer needed it for some reason, 
Um, I don't normally do that, but um, you can email them to others if, need, if necessary. It also makes it easy for quick reference. Um, so I did print these out. Um, the bed skirt, if you notice on the bottom right hand side, there is a little note section that I inserted on the iPad. Um, because this bed had a, um, had a footboard and two sideboards and as I said, she wanted it to roll over. So I have a bottom finished length that's very different from the sides. And then I also have um, how much needs to roll over um, on the top edge of that, that, those rails on the bed so that, um, so that it will wrap over to the top. Um, and again, these are, these are printed off. You don't have to print them off. A lot of times I don't. I simply keep them uh, on, on my tablet and, and also on my, um, on my computer so that I can get to them easily when necessary. Here are examples of some window measuring sheets that I, I use. The one on the back is from the master bedroom. Those are for this, uh, the panels, the stationary panels. Also did a valance in the master bath. So there is a measurement sheet for, um, for that one also. Normally I use one form per window. I only did use one form for the two single windows in the master bedroom uh, because they were exactly the same. I always check measurements to make sure they are. Um, you can use, I actually just put a quantity of two on that window because they were exactly the same, but if they're ever different, I always label those measuring sheets differently and I fill them out for each different window and then I, like I said, I label them so that I know which measurements go with which window. Here's an example of a um, pillow measuring sheet. Uh, we had several different size pillows on this particular job. Um, these measuring sheets are very comprehensive. There is a small area for a diagram if you need to do that. Reminds you for, of things like, do you need to add a zipper? Um, and also, what is that charge at the bottom? These forms actually have your charges for the pillows at the bottom of the sheets um, for your insert and your labor and your trim charge and your zipper charge. And if you are going to do a miter, um, if you charge differently for a flat flange instead of a mitered flange. Um, so all of those things are there uh, to help you not forget to leave anything off uh, uh, for charging. Once I have all of my measurements and all of my information, all of the fabric information uh, for each of the projects and each item, I come back to the workroom and I usually hop on and use um, the stationary panel workbook or the traversing panel workbook if they apply. This one applied to the stationary panels. And this actually is a picture of the first tab of the workbook. And you can see that a lot of the blocks are um, a grayish color. You have to input, um, definitely have to start with the fabric on the bottom right hand side and put in most importantly the fabric width and the vertical repeat. If you have a solid fabric you still need to put a vertical repeat of one. Um, that way it will make all of the calculators work. Once you put in that information uh, you go back to the top and you start popping in um, finished width, finished length, number of panels, widths per panel, um, hems and headers, anywhere there's a gray block you need to fill it in. And as soon as you start filling those in, it's going to start popping out the cost of your labor and then the cost of the fabric. Um, and we have the wholesale price per yard listed on the bottom right hand side. Um, and the price per yard at the top is what you would be charging your client if you're gonna charge fabric. Um, and if you don't charge fabric, you can leave that blank. So as soon as you start filling this out, it starts populating all of these, um, all of this information and carrying it over to the quote page, which is the very last page. The next page that you come to in the workbook is uh, lining information and calculations. It has already carried over um, your number of widths from the front page and the finished length you need to put in and also the hems and headers and what price you charge. If you only have, for example, only had lining and interlining, 
on these panels, you do not need to fill out lining to or black out. This is the last page of the workbook. I did not use purchase trim, fabric banding, drapery hardware order form because I did not have uh, any information to input, input there. Uh, these are straight panels, um, about a, two widths of material each or width and a half each, excuse me. And so I did not need those tabs, so I left them blank. On this page, when you get to this page, most everything has been populated that you've put in from the first two pages. Uh, but one of the most important sections is this middle, middle column. These are some of the things that um, Rosemary and I found ourselves going, oh gosh, sometimes I do or don't charge for that, and I need to. Um, things like a pinning fee, a measuring fee, a consulting fee, a delivery fee, a quoting fee, if you do renderings, if it's a, a remake, if there's a rush charge or a retail charge. Um, things like if it's an oversized panel, if there's an additional length above your normal, uh, what you normally charge for. If you hand sew the hems in any way, um, pattern drafting, color blocking. So we tried to include as many things as we could uh, so that you will not leave money on the table, so that you will make sure that, you are, that you're charging for and you get compensated for all the work that you put in. Uh, you do not have to fill in every block, but if you don't have one, it does help you double check, a good check and balance. Um, have I recorded everything that I need to record? Now, over on the right-hand side, we've got everything broken down into your total labor, your total material, your total fabric, your total hardware, and then your other fees, which is that middle section. Um, a lot of times I will, if the designer won't sit broken down between material and labor or labor and hardware, I'll add those other feeds into my labor quote and give her that total and then whatever else she needs. Some designers don't care about any of that and all they want is the bottom line. And so you've got that under your total quote. Here's a picture of the finished bed skirt and duvet and pillows. And you can see the, um, the panels um, on either side of the bed there. Um, I think it turned out really pretty. I was very pleased with the way everything worked. Um, but there is your finished product. And here are two more pictures. So you can maybe get a little bit of a better look on the panels and the bed skirt. This client was, uh, was very happy uh, with everything and how it all turned out. Again, thank you so much for being with us today during this webinar. Um, you can find us at seamlessworkroom.com and you can see all of our products there. Uh, our email is info at seamlessworkroom.com. We are on Instagram. Uh, if you search seamless underscore workroom, you can find us there. And we do have a YouTube channel. Um, and I think if you search Seamless Workroom, you would find us right now. They're just giving us that really long uh, address. But uh, on the YouTube channel, there are videos that explain and show how to actually walk through and work through a traversing panel workbook. Uh, and also how to fill out the measuring sheets. And there is also a video of Rosemary and I talking about all the different parts and pieces of Seamless Workroom and how it came about and, um, and what it can do for you. Again, thank you for viewing this presentation. My name is Amanda Smith, and on behalf of myself and Rosemary LeBlanc, we hope you have a great day.